few announcements. First, we have something as St. Agnes community to celebrate um, that as we move closer to Easter and as we are entering into the Lenten season, we have two who this weekend at the 1030 Mass will make the rite of acceptance into the order of catechumenate. And it's actually a mother and a son, Michelle Morrison and Jackson Morrison. They enter into the rite of catechumenate, which from the earliest days of the church, the catechumenate meant that they were going to enter into the Easter mysteries, preparing for the Easter mysteries of baptism, confirmation, and first communion. We invite you to pray for them, but especially invite you also to listen to the videos. We know that uh, we want to make them feel welcomed into our community, but because of the COVID, we've done videos online so you can get to know them and a little bit about them and that uh, they can truly know that they're part of our family as brothers and sisters in the community. What has led me to the Catholic faith is the sense of community. I also understand that the Catholic faith is built on both sacred scripture, sacred tradition. The Eucharist is another reason because that is the main reason because Catholics believe that the Eucharist is Jesus. And by receiving the Eucharist, we are receiving Jesus himself. And we are also able to join with God and communion with members of the church. I find myself journeying with Christ at this time of my life through prayer, reading scriptures, devotions, um, learning, and serving. What has led you to the Catholic Church? Um, I've been wanting to grow closer to God and become baptized and join the church. So how do you find yourself journeying with Christ at this time in your life? Um, mainly through like scripture and prayer and like going to church. But like, cause due to COVID, I can't go every week. But like, it's nice to like show up to the RCIT meetings. Cause like, they go through the history and stuff and it's very like enjoyable to listen to. I also like to remind you, please, as soon as possible, to go to the website and uh, Bishop John Stowe will be joining us by Zoom and Father Mark Bentley will be doing a presentation. This is a, a really big opportunity on February 25th and their presentation is on what it means to be Catholic in Appalachia and the Appalachian experience. Um, this is a great education opportunity. And uh, a lot of, we wanna give this to our parishioners first. So after the, our parishioners, we're gonna open it up to the diocese and, and the larger country. So take the time uh, this week to really uh, get online and register and also do the survey so that Bishop John and Father Mark will know a little bit about who we are at St. Agnes. I also want to remind you, the Bible study has been very helpful for me, but hopefully, and I think it has been good for everybody, we've been doing a lectionary cycle Bible study on Monday at noon. This is an opportunity to look at the readings for Sunday at the beginning of the week, and that I, uh, we can look at this and bring our own experience to the scriptures. It, it provides great faith sharing and offers me insights into the homily. So I would really appreciate it as young and old, as many who would like to participate. Um, and you don't have to do it every week. If, if you're free on a Monday, uh, join us at noon for um, a lectionary based Bible study. And then lastly, as you know, this upcoming Wednesday will be Ash Wednesday. We're offering two masses, one at noon, and if you don't want to come into the building or because of the limited capacity in the building, the noon mass will be on the radio. And so we'll go outside and um, we will distribute communion as, as we ask you to get out of your car to receive it if you're able. And also the 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. are the masses but we will be distributing, blessing and distributing ashes before mass. So even those that can't stay can receive 
the ashes. So we invite you to come out Ash Wednesday at either um, it'll be a half an hour before Mass. So at 11.30 and 6.30, be here so that you can um, receive ashes if you decide not to save for Mass. Thank you. Good morning. This is the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Just to note, when we sing the Holy Holy, we will be singing the, uh, from the Mass of Creation by Marty Hagen. Our opening hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in today's gospel we hear that Jesus reaches out to the excluded leper and invites him into God's inclusive love. We all carry areas of leprosy where there may be guilt or shame, where we need God's healing and mercy like the leper. And so we come before our Lord asking that he would heal us and restore us to the wholeness of God's love. Lord Jesus, you heard the leper who called upon you for help. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus... You stretched out your hand and healed the outcast. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to open our hearts, especially to the marginalized. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, 
alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide and hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When someone has on the skin of their body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a leprous disease on the skin of their body, that person shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons the priests. Anyone who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of their head be disheveled and shall cover their upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. That person shall remain unclean as long as the disease persists. And being unclean, shall a one live alone with their dwelling outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you. And you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my fault to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of the heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A 
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that, the, so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am in Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A man with Jesus a man with leprosy came to Jesus begging him. And kneeling said to Jesus, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, Jesus sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country. And people came to Jesus from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. We have been doing a scripture study on Zoom as a parish based on the lectionary cycle. And the last two uh, sessions we've had have been very, I've found very insightful. And as you listen today, those who were part of that scripture study will notice thoughts that they gave me about the scriptures to help understand what Jesus is getting at today, because we can bring our experiences to the scriptures. You see, our stories and our lives give flesh to the scripture, our experiences. And this is really how the gospels were written. They were the Christian community's experience of the risen Lord in their lives. And it really does become, how do these scriptures apply to today's world. And so today, this first reading from Leviticus, where we hear this law with leprosy, I think we have to understand that it wasn't a punishment, but this law was put in place to protect others. And so I think there's a lot of relevancy today I think with COVID, that there are ways that um, a lot of the social distancing and masks and other things are about protecting others. 
However, the story of Jesus and the leper today reminds us that there are times where the gospel does call us to take risk, to bring healing. And we can see in our society those who, like Jesus, take that great risk. Nurses and medical professional, grocery store workers, teachers, other essential workers. And I can only think of how many of our parishioners I hear that are taking the risk at St. Agnes to distribute the vaccine so that people can experience healing. This is Jesus' way of bringing wholeness as God uses these people. And the reality is there have been those who have heroically risked their lives and lost their lives in order to bring this healing to others. So today's gospel, Jesus and this leprosy, I would suggest that less leprosy has probably been very common for us in the last year. It's that place where we have maybe felt isolated, lonely, and excluded. And in the gospel, imagine this leper approaching Jesus. And perhaps, as someone said in our Bible study, perhaps they were holding Jesus back. Don't touch him. The danger of the disease. And yet Jesus touches that place of guilt, that place of shame, that place of exclusion, and brings him into wholeness. And that's what Jesus desires to do to us, for us. And there does seem in our culture to be a leprosy. A leprosy of division, hatred, exclusion, and resentment. Where we keep people at arm's length and we do not see them as our brother and sister. This is the leprosy that Jesus takes upon himself on the cross. In a sense, he becomes the vaccine, the antibiotic that brings about unity and oneness. That Jesus takes our sickness, physical, emotional, spiritual, upon himself, and brings healing. So the leper is free now. But notice, listen to what the gospel said. Jesus becomes like the leper. He now can't go into the city like the leper couldn't. He takes his suffering, our sickness upon us, and his death and resurrection that this is symbolic of to bring about new life. Truly the suffering servant that brings us to wholeness. But those of us that believe this, that we've received this antibiotic, this vaccine of the healing of the risen Lord, it calls for us a response. We were discussing in Bible study the uh, Jesuit priest Gregory Boyle, who works with gang members. And those that have spent time in prison, those who have had rife lives, those who have suffered from addiction, And Gregory Boyle has brought them in as brothers and sisters. Because this Jesuit has the insight that Jesus did not look down upon anyone, but saw them as a brother or sister. And it's more than a service we offer. Whatever our profession, we can think of things that way. But our call is to what Gregory Boyle calls kinship. That we have the same struggles and joys. That the other person is our brother and sister. I think we've all had experiences, if we're honest, where we've looked down upon another. I share a story of my early days in the seminary. I was working with the homeless. And I was in the back of a van, and my job was to hand out coats to the homeless. And I got real caught up in being productive, getting the job done. Not noticing the person in front of me that I was handing the coat to. And looking at them with love and respect. 
And so I handed coat after coat after coat, thought I was doing a good job so that we could get home on our Friday evening. And all of a sudden, a short African-American man came up to the van. And I had a big coat. And I said, oh, that won't fit you. And I got a small one and said, here. The man looked in my eyes and said, brother, I don't need your coat, and walked away. You see, I looked, I looked down. I felt about this small. But he taught me something. He taught me that Jesus' call is to see everyone as brother and sister. That the exclusion and difficulties that, the, that we face in life, that we're no different. That as Carl Rogers once said, that what seems so unique, which is also sometimes what seems most dark to us, is what we share most in common as brothers and sisters. And you see, the gifts of the margins is that I'm not simply doing a service, but it obliterates the illusion that we're separate. So what te Jesus teaches us is that when we stand with the despised and left behind, when we stand with the demonized, it's the call that they will stop being demonized. When we stand with the disposable, it will be so that they will no longer be thrown away. Mother Teresa gives a great diagnosis of the leprosy that we face as a culture. She says that the problem with the world is that we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And that there is a leprosy in all of us that needs to be healed. And it's the part of ourselves that we can, can't, uh, cannot accept or we think is unlovable. And who are we called to be for each other as brothers and sisters? We're called to hold up a mirror to others. To let them know that they are exactly what God has in mind. In a sense, to return people to themselves. Not to hold a bar up, but a mirror up. That you are exactly, and I am exactly, who God has called you and me to be. And sometimes we have to dismantle messages of shame and disgrace that get in the way stop us from helping us to see each other that way. That in a sense, we're called to return one another to ourselves. And this past week, I was given a poem that reminds us of the call of kinship. And that this kinship is about what we do at this table. That this table breaks through the walls of exclusion in the Eucharist to create a table of inclusion where we begin to see each other as brothers and sisters, that we return each other to ourselves. This mirror draws us in to see ourselves as we truly are with all of our different stripes and titles, simply brothers and sisters. And this poem could be a prayer of what the Eucharist is intending to do to us, to invite us into that inclusive banquet of the kingdom. The poem is called In the Time of Pandemic by Kitty O'Mara, and I read a piece of it about the pandemic. And they listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced. Some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices, and dreamed new images, and created new ways to live and heal the earth as they had been healed. And 
our baptismal vows we renew to cleanse ourselves from that leprosy of exclusion, to truly see ourselves as beloved sons and gods. And our, and our response is, I do believe. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do believe. And this is our faith. This is the faith of the church we are proud to profess in Christ Jesus our Lord. And to the God of mercy who gives us wholeness in Jesus Christ, we bring our petitions. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead the church, that they find strength in prayer and service, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are treated as lepers today because of racism, sexism, economic inequality, or any kind of injustice, that we may faithfully imitate Christ in embracing the world's sick and disenfranchised, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer for health care that meets the needs of all and for the willingness to provide it even at our own personal cost. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all of us who seek to heal others through our parish ministries or through loving attention, listening, or any kind of caring support, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who touch those in need through kindness, companionship, generosity, or any simple acts of consolation in this community and beyond, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Vicki Hussein, Mary Sue Mimi Vaught, and Patricia Patty Thomas. And for those who grieve them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The parish community would like to support you in prayer. Please share with us your needs and intentions. We pray especially in thanksgiving for um, Michelle Morrison and Jackson Morrison who will make the rite of acceptance into the catechumenate and prepare for Easter sacraments. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those affected by COVID, those in need of healing. We pray for the vaccine and understanding from the experts that Numbers are going down some, but we need to be vigilant in that we pray for the Hispanic and African-American community for healing there since they're the most affected by the COVID, COVID we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. An all-powerful God, you govern the nations with love. Listen to our prayers and show the fullness of your reign. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is Love Goes On, verses 1 and 4. Love is patient, love is kind, never ending, never ending, slow to anger, rich in mercy, love goes on beyond all time. Love our journey, love our goal, 
Though our faith may move the mountains, love alone can heal the broken. Only love will make us Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all of God's holy church. And may this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks. And raise to you a hymn of glory and praise. O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having, having filled us with the life by the Holy Spirit, you never cease through us to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, dispense without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom. It shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, Within Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are all of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by God's love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our bishop, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and love. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Agnes, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. And through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Recognizing that we're called in a world of exclusion to build a world of inclusion as we pray for the fullness of that reign of God in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, danos la paz, danos la paz.
And these are the gifts of God given for us, the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart.